All right, guys. Well, up until about 10 minutes ago, it was a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of everything. And gee, what a surprise! The black clouds rolling back in over Bugs in a Jar Farm like we have not had enough rain this summer. But anyway, it has gone from a gorgeous, sunny Sunday morning to a cloudy, gloomy Sunday afternoon here on a... It is August 11th, 2024. And uh, so guys, I, I really do need to make a sincere apology for that chronicle of the collapse that I slipped into yesterday about this ridiculous distraction dog and pony show where I actually found myself talking about this planet eater corporate whore named Tim Walls. But, but, but anyway, guys, let me get back to reality. You know, I found that over at Counterpunch. And, but this is the straight ahead doomer porn chronicle of the collapse that I was intending to do yesterday before even I fell for this uh, distraction shit. Uh, will I ever learn? But anyway, we're going to hear from our our old Doomer buddy, <coughs> Robert Hunziker here, the, from this little lefty outfit over there at Counterpunch. You, you know, I, I have not, uh, I have not done a rant from Robert in way too long. I, I think I've interviewed Robert Hunziker three times. Uh, Robert, you know, Robert's cool. He is a true doomer, and you know what I like about Robert is he's, uh, you know, he's not one of these absolute uh, data-driven minutiae uh, data doomers. Uh, he is, you know, he's. I'm assuming he calls himself a journalist, and you know he just looks at what what is going on between the lines of the data, and uh, speaks as refreshingly, honestly as anyone else I know. Mostly about uh, climate collapse, uh, so we're gonna hear how Robert Hunziker is spinning the story from Antarctica and Counterpunch in the summer of 2024. So this is what is on Robert Hunziker's mind uh, today. From Counterpunch, midwinter, Antarctica is 50 degrees Fahrenheit above average. Remember, it is the middle of winter in Antarctica for those uh, you non-scientists out there. Okay, Robert, sum it up. What is going on down there? <clears throat> Temperatures for the entire month of July in Antarctica were 50 degrees Fahrenheit above average but it also experienced days when temperatures spiked up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit above average. Yes, Antarctica is the world's deep freeze, and it is the dead of winter. So what does this portend? For starters, according to Michael Dukes, director of forecasting at MetDesk, quote, in Antarctica, generally that kind of warming in the winter and continuing into summer months can lead to collapsing of the ice sheets. Close quote. And, and so, Robert, I, I'll put the link on here. And, and Robert, you know, he, he cites, you know, all of, he, he's not just talking out his ass. He, you know, he does all the 
the doom scrolling on whatever subject he's talking about. So uh, every time uh, Robert has a story, he can link you to all of the uh, the data driven. And so all those links are in here, but I'm not going to sit here and read the source of each one. You can find them yourself. All right. Where were we, Robert? Already, the summer of 2022 and 2023 saw unprecedented loss of Antarctic sea ice, which fell below 2 million square kilometers for the first time in the satellite record going back to 1979. Moreover, the year 2023 marked the eighth year of steep decline in sea ice. So I'm going to make the crazy prediction that uh, 2024 will mark the ninth year. Just a crazy prediction. Antarctica is massive with total area as large as the U.S. and Mexico combined an average ice thickness of 7,200 feet, that's what, close to a mile and a half, covering 98% of the continent. This is 90% of the world's ice and 70% of the fresh water of the world, you know, right now, uh, frozen. There's plenty for global warming to work with. A primary ongoing concern is sea level rise. According to NASA, the rate of sea level rise has tripled in the 21st century. As for future expectations, there is a paleoclimate record that spells out what to expect. And then, uh, okay, quoting uh, the, the last study he was just quoting. Quote, While today's CO2-driven climate change scenario is unprecedented in human history, similar circumstances have existed in the geological record that give us an idea of what to expect in the way of global sea level rise in the process that will get us there. About 3.2 million years ago during the Pliocene epoch, CO2 levels were about 400 parts per million, where they are today, and temperatures were 2 to 3 degrees C above the, quote, pre-industrial temperatures of 1850 to 1880. At the same time, proxy data indicate global sea level was about 52 feet within a 39 to 66 foot range higher than today. Close quote. Back to Robert. Maybe that is why the IPCC strongly suggests keeping temperatures ideally below one and a half cc, but not above two degrees C pre-industrial at all cost, or big trouble ensues. For your information, the IPCC looks for sustained temperatures above one and a half C for several years to declare it official, and the world has already blown through the one and a half C barrier. <laughs> Hopefully, that barrier eases up or stabilizes, but It requires cutting emissions almost immediately. Good luck with that, 
global CO2 emissions are blasting off to the upside and not looking back. So this is the status of atmospheric CO2 as measured in, you know, Mauna Loa, where they're always talking about. All right, August 2nd of 2024, we were just shy of 425 parts per million. One year earlier, 421 and a half parts per million. So between August 2nd and 2020, 23 and 2024, the one year change was 3.24 parts per million. The 1960 year change was 0 0.71 parts per million. <clears throat> CO2 affects temperatures, which, according to Copernicus Climate Change Services, exceeded one and a half degree C, which is otherwise known, thank you Robert, as 2.7 degree Fahrenheit above pre-industrial for the first time in a 12 month period from February 2023 to January 24. This is the level that 195 countries that signed on to the, you know, that absolute joke 2015 Paris Agreement agreed to stay below. Oops, it only took nine years. For the record, and then he uh, cites this other story, for the record, quote, the annual rate of increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide over the past 60 years is about 100 times faster than previous natural increases, such as those that occurred at the end of the last ice age 11,000 to 17,000 years ago, close quote. Back to Robert. That explains why it only took nine years to hit one and a half C. Paleoclimate research of the above mentioned Pliocene shows a CO2 rate rate of increase of 0 0.02 parts per million per year in nature without humans around. But human influence has cranked it up to 2.8 parts per million per annum. The 2023 full year rate more than 100 times faster. Ipso facto, Global warming is on a war path, according to the Climate Adaptation Center. Quote, research supports the conclusion that by 2 degrees C, virtually all of Greenland, most of West Antarctica, and part of East Antarctica will be locked into long-term irrevocable sea level rise, even if we succeed in drawing down temperatures at a later date. This is primarily because the warmer ocean will hold heat much longer than the atmosphere and because of a number of self-reinforcing feedback mechanisms. As a result, it takes ice sheets much longer to grow back tens of thousands of years than to lose their ice. <clears throat> and then he sources all that back to Robert. All of which leads to when or if Antarctic sea ice will reach a serious breaking point. This challenging supposition has possibly been answered, and then he cites a uh, report from the National Snow and Ice Data Center, quote, What happened in the winter of 2023 
shocked scientist. It was completely off the rails, according to Ted Scombos, senior researcher at Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences. Throughout the 2023 winter, sea ice was far below any previous winter extent in the 45-year satellite record, close quote. Back to Robert. There is clear evidence of what is referred to as a regime shift in Antarctica. To wit, and now he quotes uh, another long quote from these uh, Antarctic ice studies, quote, low sea ice extent once dominated certain areas, especially near the Antarctic Peninsula, but now all sectors surrounding Antarctica are responding together. Referred to as spatial coherence, this is yet another sign that something is shifting for Antarctic sea ice not just in some areas, not just in some years, but on larger scales and for longer periods, these Antarctic wide sea ice changes together with their greater variability and persistence are three main factors that indicate a regime shift. Back to Robert. Additionally, sea ice is taking longer to recover from low extents, and the recovered ice is thinner than decades earlier, all of which is attributable to a warming planet, with Antarctica experiencing bouts of excessively high anomalous temperatures more frequently, even during the winter but winter temperatures, you know, so far at least, do remain below freezing. Nevertheless, the major concern is the warming trend and the regime shift. Moreover, what's not seen is most concerning. For example, a headline in Live Science from May of this year, quote, warm ocean water is rushing beneath Antarctica's doomsday glacier, making collapse more likely. Indeed, it would be enormously comforting if scientists could say for sure that the prospect of collapsing ice sheets and rapidly flowing glaciers on a major scale, taking sea levels far too high, flooding coastal cities are not a concern this century, so no sweat, don't worry. But they cannot say that because climate change is moving much faster than scientists' models predict. For example, nobody in 2000 or 2010 or even a few years ago foresaw a major Antarctic regime shift or a 12-month consecutive increase of above 1.5 C above pre-industrial by 2024. In point of fact, climate change is so far ahead of schedule that it is ridiculous if climate models missed identifying the shockingly rapid onset of two extremely powerful climate-altering events signaling deep trouble dead ahead, what are they missing now? According to Sharon Stammerjohn, senior, senior researcher at the Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, at the University of Colorado in Boulder, quote, conceptually, I just see this wall of heat knocking at the door in the Southern Ocean, and it is starting to find ways 
to come in, close quote. Here is what UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, you know, our chief doomer, uh, at World Environment Day on June 5th about heat finding its way. Quote, the truth is the world is spewing emissions so fast that by 2030, a far higher temperature rise would be all but guaranteed. The truth is we already face incursions into the one and a half degree territory. In 2015, they said the chance of such a breach was near zero, close quote. He calls for nations of the world to come together to halt fossil fuel emissions. You might remember that showing up in my Ain't Gonna Happen roundup around a few weeks ago. Similarly, the International Energy Agency's Declaration of 2021 reported, quote, there can be no new oil and gas infrastructure if the planet is to avoid careening past one and a half C of global heating above pre-industrial times, close quote. However, the truth is revealed only three years later. Global Energy Monitor's 2024 report states, quote, the world's fossil fuel producers, you know, being led uh, here in the U.S. under the watch of uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you know, those fossil fuel producers, the world's fossil fuel producers are on track to nearly quadruple the amount of extracted oil and gas from newly approved projects by the end of this decade with the United States leading the way in a surge of activity that threatens to blow apart agreed climate goals, close quote. And that was where I went off into that rant yesterday uh, about how it makes no difference whether Donald Trump or Kamala Harris are in the White House. It is going to be drill baby drill, frack baby frack, pedal to the metal. Back to Robert. That will crank up. Mauna Loa's CO2 readings to spinning out of control mode. And just for good measure, quoting uh, the head of Aramco, Ami Nasiz, quote, we should abandon the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas. A wall of heat hitting Antarctica is bad news and regime shift tells a worrisome tale. And with CO2 already cranking up 100 plus times faster than all history and with fossil fuel interest on a road to madness, where does this leave Antarctica? No comment. Still, where do things stand? There are scientists on both sides of the maxim, we are screwed. Some say we can still work out of this self-inflicted disaster. Ain't gonna happen. But others say it is already too late. Usually, these situations end up somewhere in the middle. So, what will we are partially screwed look like? Not good. There you go. What will we are partially, well, fucked look like? 
So we will find out what uh, <laughs> we are partially fucked looks like uh, but right now it is 69 degrees it is 69 degrees the temperature has fallen 10 degrees in the past hour since I started this rant the temperature has probably dropped five or six degrees as uh, it looks like gee whiz a thunderstorm rolling in from the north. What a surprise. So much for me getting out there and enjoying this absolutely gorgeous sunny summer day. Uh, I guess I should have gotten up earlier and done that this morning, huh? All right, the raindrops begin to fall. Let me go get in all my lawn chairs while I still can. Bye, guys.